Wednesday morning. A business park somewhere in marketing. Wind. You press the intercom. I'm here for the interview with Andy Mallows. But he's running late. Conference calls. Reacquaint yourself with a person specification and help yourself to water. You're wondering how to explain this doctor's appointment to your line manager when your pocket flashes. Another text from Mum. I've seen the job description online, Thomas. It's a competitive starting salary and a comprehensive benefits package. She's convinced you've got it, but your last successful interview was for an overdraft extension. Andy Mallows bursts into reception, crushes your fingers in his hand. Thomas Wainwright! Why have you come in a suit? Tell him it's professional, polite. I don't have the shoulders for it. Andy Mallows shows you to the boardroom and then slumps down in his PA warmed chair. He grabs a netbook from the desk and punches its touch screen. This your CV? He asks you to excuse him. There's no time for breakfast in this game. Silence. And Andy Mallows dunking crisps into a tub of hummus. You start by telling him about your current role, successfully prioritising workloads, delivering multiple deadlines on time and on budget, but Mallows cuts you off with... Windsurfing or caravaning. He throws the hummus away and pockets the watsits. Seven percent to seven. You can't find an answer, but Mallows doesn't seem to care. He rocks back and forth on his chair, reminding you... Over 130% of communication is physical. Did you have sex last night? Get it while you can. If you work with me, you'll never see your missus again. You tell him not to worry. I've been single since uni. Andy Mallows isn't listening. Andy Mallows has taken his pen. Andy Mallows is sketching something. Andy Mallows has drawn a picture of a gravestone. And your name is on it. What's the epitaph? Tell me the strap line, Wainwright. Really important person. Already impressive pension. You try to reply but he kicks you under the table. Come on, get talking. What would your ex-girlfriend say about you? You move your chair away from him. Andy Mallow stands, walks to the door and locks it. Twice. He sighs, closes his eyes and rests his head softly in his hands. Oh, Thomas. Thomas. Let's go off the record. It's feedback time. I don't even know you, Tommy, but I know you're better than this. When I'm looking for a marketeer, I want to get a big personality. Pink shirt? Volunteering. Volunteering. Tell Andy Mallows about the youth scheme. What? <laughs> Paintballing with cerebral palsy sufferers. Andy Mallow stands, livid. Gap year? This CV reads like a gap life! Where do you see yourself in five minutes' time? Pegasus Business Park. Rain. You call for a taxi. Back at home, you stare at the screen. Wondering whether to extend your job search to London. Pocket flashes. Mum still. And this time it's ringing. It's all good experience. All good experience. She tells you to phone him for feedback. He gave me feedback. This CV reads like a gap life. Oh, well. Had any luck on dating direct? Any hits? They're making redundancies at work, Mum. I'm trying to look for a job, not a partner. Why don't you send over your profile? Let me see what you've written. I can proofread it. You tell her that your focus is on career progression. That you can't socially mobilise on your current salary. But she signs off with... Well, as long as you're happy. As long as you're happy. The internet has other ideas. There's four types of people on Facebook. The settlist, the colonialist, the leisureist, and all your ex-girlfriends. The settlist always asks for your friendship, never the other way around. Hey mate, finally found you. What are you doing with yourself these days? 
A-levels were enough for him. While you were worrying about footnotes, Settlist was learning how to tile an ensuite. You accept because you need him for a drink at Easter. New kitchen, check. Wet room, check. Walk-in wardrobe, check. Just got to finish varnishing the cot for our new arrival. Colonialist has changed his profile picture again. This time we're milking a goat in Chad. This message to you and 67 others. Hey peeps, I'm back in Shoreditch Ends in November. Probably around the 8th or 9th. Anyone got a sofa? This is my new number. From kiteboarding in Buenos Aires to beach parties in Goa. Colonialist has trumped your every travel. Internet poker once a month, and I can be on the beach every day. You reply, because 67 others have. Leisurist was out again last night. There's photo feed for pub and club. Here's me patting in monochrome. Here's me deep-throating cocktail umbrellas. Here's me gurning till 30, cos I've always got teaching to fall back on. And here she is, convincing you that you're committing social suicide. You accept the tag because you need her endorsement. What's the epitaph? Tell me the strap line, Wainwright. Really important person, already impressive pension. Ed from uni tells you... Labour girth. Swears by them. Says they're the only recruitment agency that asks about your degree. You book annual leave. Tell your line manager you want to spend a day researching Twitter etiquette. You sat with Paula from Labour girth. And she's telling you it's the best CV she's ever seen. Good enough for the Aldi grad scheme. Paula tells you she got a candidate through to second round interview. Had his whole life in front of him. 48 grand starting salary, company car, pension, cancer cover and a choice of four fiancés. I spent ages with him but he bottled it. Didn't demonstrate elasticity of intellect under duress. So, how can I help you Thomas? You tell Paula you've got a can-do attitude. You tell her about the volunteering. You tell her you drove the minibus. Paula tells you you've got a passion for all things related to retail. She starts telling you about this client. My client is interviewing immediately. They're looking for an integral member of their close-knit, fast-paced blue chip company. Fancy it. OK. What's the role? Which sector? Actually... I'm not sure you boast a decade of necessary experience, Thomas. Oh, how about this position then, baby cakes? My client is a small, intimate company, very hands-on. Oh, the potential for personal impact is high as the decision-making chain is short. I'm interested. Where are they based? Well, you like the sound of it? Oh, I'm not sure you've got the transferable skills. Oh. One left, last chance. My client is a new business venture, potentially very lucrative. Oh, they're an extremely loyal bunch. Not easy to please, but if you perform to their exacting standards, you could make a real difference to their investments. Well, what is my client? Excuse me, Thomas. I'm offering you a job for life here. You get up to leave. Tell her you'll think about it. New kitchen, check. Wet room, check. Walk-in wardrobe, check. You sit back down. Tell her you can do tomorrow. Paula from Labour Girth leaves you a voicemail, telling you to be on your doorstep at 8.14, sharp. She tells you to pack your best portfolio, get a good night's sleep, and dress to suit the culture of the company. Paula pulls up at 11.00. Strides up the driveway and forcefully shoves a motorcycle helmet down onto your head. You ask if you're going on the back, and she tells you not to worry. I've got the sidecar! When a red light finally stops her, you try and find out more about the role. How has the company's competitive environment been altered by the economic downturn? What's the interview format? Can I talk, salary? Made it to the corners! Paula pulls into a 24-hour supermarket, parks in the disabled space. Remember what I told you, my client wants you to enunciate your words clearly. Try and listen to how some of the locals speak. Be patient and for heaven's sake, Thomas, don't mention your degree. You pray 
Paula from Labour Guns to smoke her, that she's stopped for cigarettes. But the bike nav has other ideas. You have reached your destination. You politely remind Paula that you're a graduate, that you shouldn't be anywhere near a supermarket, but she cuts you off. Don't be pathetic, Thomas. You've got a client to impress, remember? This is an on-the-job assessment, and I'm going to be watching your every shake and shiver. Paula, this is a farce. You haven't even given me a job description. What am I going to be doing in there? But Paula's not listening. She's already ten paces ahead. Inside the supermarket, you're herding 16 pensioners into an orderly queue. And Joyce has got both alcohol and loose vegetables, and she's understandably anxious. This CD reads like a gap life! On this day, seven years ago, you were up to your neck in a dissertation. Descartes and his philosophy of self. Now, you're reassuring Mr. Rahesh that he can still use his rucksack for the groceries. Here's me gurning till 30 because I've always got teaching to fall back on. Albert is ecstatic. He never thought he'd have the opportunity in his lifetime to scan his own sardines. Out of nowhere, Paula pinches your ass and tells you you're doing great. You're made for the job. She congratulates you and hands you an envelope. And the great news is you can start immediately. You're another one of my success stories, babe. Labour girth. Erecting successes 2007. Inside the envelope, a name badge. Hi, I'm Tom, your unexpected Samaritan in the bagging area. I help, therefore I am. Internet poker once a month, and I can be on the beach every day. Back at home, you stare at the screen, wondering whether your line manager is really that bad. Pocket flashes. Mum still. I've got that slow cooker, Thomas. It would slot into your fast-paced lifestyle seamlessly. Seamlessly. Come down for the weekend. You can fetch it. Shoulder of lamb just falls off the bone. I've got that appraisal. Tomorrow. Oh, don't panic, Poppet. To even have a job during this recession is remarkable. She tells you to Skype Auntie Jean, leave a comment on Uncle George's blog, and say goodbye to your bedroom. We're knocking the wall through tomorrow. You ask what they're doing with the space. Wet room. Oh, and you're doing all right for money, aren't you? Monday morning. Appraisal. Somewhere on the second floor. Rupert Eggshell picks at his brunch while you put forward your case for a pay rise. You remind him of your myriad achievements. Apostrophes you've added to his emails. The staples you've driven through his reports. The, the, the espresso machine you've synced to his desktop. But Rupert looks up from his artichoke hearts and says... What do you, um... What do you know about the restructuring? You say, it sounds like redundancy. Well, that could be an opportunity. You ask if your job is safe. <sighs> My deepest condolences, Thomas. But you see, we simply can't justify your salary. Graduates are a luxury, you understand? Great when labour are in, but now it's time to box clever. You said I was different to the other grads, Rupert. You said I showed admirable bounce-back ability. But he holds up his hand and says, Let's go off the record. This CV reads like a gap life! He tells you he still has a use for your grammar. Good enough for the Audi grad scheme. He tosses a white envelope across the table at you. Open it, he says. It's the first time I've ever offered a role like this. <claps> chop, chop, Thomas. Your future's in there, waiting to be actioned. The job title floors you. Non-executive textual PA. Zeitgeisty, isn't it? Talk about mixing business with pleasure. This role is at the forefront of communications. Now, and this is crucial, what would your ex-girlfriend say about you? Working intimately with the head of marketing, Rupert Eggshell, you will be responsible for his rapidly expanding outbox of telephonic prose. This smartphone and I are on the rocks. 
She's forever demanding my attention, vibrating, illuminating, shrieking into the small hours. Lord knows I try and keep on top of my text messages, Thomas, but I'm only human. The deluge of drunken discourse, the avalanche of unrequited invitations, this convivial blitzkrieg! The postholder will be highly experienced in interpersonal diplomacy, confident in managing sensitive stakeholders, and in full possession of an extraordinarily dexterous right hand. It'll have to be part-time at first, Thomas. Two hours a day overseeing my inbox. I'll have to micromanage you to begin with, teach you how to disseminate targeted time-critical text messages in an exact replica of my voice. Then, after a 18-month probationary period, I'll grant you artistic license. How does that sound, Tommy? Free reign to utilize my inimitable tone of textual discourse. To serenade my acquaintances. To satiate my lovers. You hand the envelope back. Tell him you need something full time. You have reached your destination. Something substantial. But you're the perfect candidate, Thomas. I've tailored the person specification to your strengths, your ambitions. How will my performance be assessed? He doesn't know. What separates a, a good textual PA from an average one? Integrity, he thinks. Does the offer include a comprehensive benefits package? You could be Rupert Eggshell's ghost blogger by Christmas. And the great news is you can start immediately. I've got urgent golfing commitments in Dubai, and I'm going to need an arsenal of apologetic text templates. And it'll be the perfect introduction to your two biggest clients, my wife and my mistress. You ask to sleep on it. To even have a job during this recession is remarkable. Saturday night. A hallway somewhere in a house party. You try and avoid Melinda from school, but she never forgets her face. So what exactly is it that you do, Thomas? You've rehearsed this all afternoon. I'm in communications. Targeted ones. Time critical. Talk about mixing business with pleasure. She asks how you get to the top in that sector. You tell her it takes time. But is that your passion? You nod. But she makes a difference. She works with people, not profits. She takes their problems home with her. Her passion is behavioural therapy. And it should be yours too. But how do you square your commercial existence with the pressing need for social reform? And how do you sleep at night, Thomas, knowing there are people less fortunate than you? Not this again. You need a diversion. You ask about settlists. Mortgaged up, right? Wife and kids still. Settle, but not sticking around. He's off travelling for 18 months. The Far East, taking the family with him. He's really got the bug for it. What about colonialist, you think? You ask if he's still globetrotting. Gosh, no. He's all career now. He got through to the final round of interviews for that graduate scheme. You know, the one with the fiancés. You ask about leisureist. Is she in the Priory yet? <laughs> She's engaged, best part of a year. She's coming off the pill at Christmas. Meanwhile, you've stood still since school. What's the epitaph? Tell me the strap line, Wainwright. Really important person, already impressive pension. Pocket flashes. It's eggshell. And he wants you manning his phone. Overtime, he offers. Wind. You wait for a taxi.